If you ever worked with HTML, worked with emails, or watched the Tom Scott video, then you've probably heard of Base64. Base64 is a way to take any form of data and transform it into a long string of plain text to be sent over the web, or any medium with that matter, without having to worry about any data being corrupted, and vice versa. And if you understood all that, then you don't need to watch the rest of this video. The rest of you have a lot to learn. So the data that makes up the files on your computer and the text in your email is primarily made up of bits, which could be one of two values, a one or a zero. String 8 bits together and you make a byte. A byte has 256 distinct arrangements of those 8 bits, and you can find that out by raising 2 to the power of 8. There are also some other names for different arrangements of bits, but we don't need to delve into those. The American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or ASCII, is a way to map a byte to a character or a symbol. It was developed by Americans, so it doesn't have many symbols available like Unicode does. So let's say you want to send an email to a friend or coworker. You type in the header, type up your email, and hit send. And let's just assume that this was back when Unicode wasn't that big. Now if we take a look at the individual characters of this email and put their ASCII values below, you'll start noticing that they're all below the number 128. In the late 80s, only 7-bit data could be transmitted between programs and channels instead of 8, mainly to save money on data transmission costs. This is fine for your message though, because you speak English, but then there's a problem. You can attach files to emails, and those files are made up of 8-bit bytes, but the network you're sending it over only uses 7-bits, so there wouldn't be a way to send your file to your friend without it getting mangled up along the way. To fix this, Base64 was created. It works by taking in 3 bytes of data and giving it back 4. Okay, I'm oversimplifying. Let's take a closer look at what's going on. Say your message is simply, hey, in ASCII, it gets translated into the numbers 72, 101, and 121. Now what Base64 does is concatenate the bits of these numbers into one long 24-bit number. These 24 bits then get split up into four equal parts. Notice how there is six bits in each of these parts. Remember that bit earlier where I said 2 to the power of 8 is 256? Well, there are six bits now, and 2 to the power of 6 is 64, and this is where Base64 gets its name. Anyways, each 6-bit number is mapped to a different code that is the Base64 index table. I'll put this on the side of the screen so you can follow along. I'm also going to turn these bits back into numbers so it's easy for you to read them. So the numbers get mapped onto the index table and the letters are represented in ASCII, but this time it's guaranteed not to go over 7 bits. And just like that, you have your message encoded in base64. To reverse the process, take the encoded message and run them through the index table the other way around. String up the bits into that 24-bit number again, and split them back up into 3s and map them back to ASCII. When encoding, this process gets run for every 3-byte block in the data that you're encoding. If there isn't the right amount of data to fill up the last 3 byte block, the spaces in that block without any data are filled in with zeros, and a special character or two is added to the end of the output to specify that the final block only contained 1 or 2 bytes. Decoding is exactly what the reverse process is. Just run through it all the way to the end, and if there's one padding character at the end, the last block contains 2 bytes. If there's 2, the block contains 1 byte. Otherwise, it's a full 24-bit block. Now, much more information can be sent in emails, including Unicode characters, which is what lets you send your friends an emoji or words in a completely different language.